So about a month ago, I woke up laughing, laughing hard. And these days we know we all need more laughter. And I was having the best dream. I was a little girl in a blue and polka dotted dress with a silk white ribbon around it. It was Christmas Eve. The smell of prime rib, fondue, alcohol, and sugar cookies were in the air. <laughs> My family was gathered to celebrate, and I was in the circle in the middle of my three favorite guys, my Grandpa Joe, my Dad George, and my Uncle Rick. And they were singing and laughing. Uncle Rick was playing the guitar, and I was in the middle, blissed out, beaming, center of attention. <laughs> it was glorious. You know, that, just did, uh, that dream wasn't just a dream. I remember that Christmas Eve and like it was the back of my hand. And my family didn't just celebrate that way on holidays. Uh, most Saturday afternoons you could find us at my aunt and uncle's in their kitchen nook uh, with the rest of my family playing poker. And I say the rest of my family because my cousins were all quite a bit older than me. My aunt and uncle had three boys, and uh, the closest in age was 10 years older than me. And my brother Chris uh, was seven years older than me. <clears throat> so they would be playing poker with their girlfriends, and my aunt and my uncle and my mom and my dad. And I would be under the table waiting for coins to drop. Because <sighs> if I hit the floor, it was mine. After smiling about this dream, um, it kind of changed, it really hit me because most of my adults, my loving adults, are gone now. My grandpa Joe passed away about 20 years ago, and my dad nine years ago, my Aunt Myrna seven years ago, and my dear mother six years ago. The only one left of those uh, crucial adults that helped raise me is my Uncle Rick. And when Uncle Rick passes, it will truly be an end of an era. Now, my mom and my aunt were sisters. And so my dad and my Uncle Rick became best friends. And they did everything together. They vacationed, they, motor they went motorcycle riding, hunting, fishing, visiting bars, uh, General Tom Foolery, my uncle and dad would try anything at least once. The couples even owned apartment buildings together at one time. And the other thing is, is that they were always dragging me around because I was always the youngest. And they were older. And you might think that I was an oops baby, but I really feel like I was the chosen one. <laughs> the golden child, because I got something that those other kids didn't get, that precious commodity, time. My adults, my two sets of parents had time. Now, Rick, he uh, was like a second dad to me. And he also had a lot more patience than my real dad. <laughs> and, uh, he, uh, sometimes my parents would drop me off at Myrna and Rick's to do homework because when I did it with Uncle Rick, I didn't cry. <laughs> and that's also why Uncle Rick taught me how to drive in Aunt Myrna's Monte Carlo. <laughs> and Uncle Rick, when I finished a word problem and I got it correctly, he would say, very good, pen." And when I spelled the word right, which is rare still, <laughs> he'd say, very good, pen." And when I parallel parked and rocked it, he said, very good, pen." I adored him. I adored him so much when Valentine's Day would come around. For quite a few years, I made him super Valentine's cards, like super size puking with red and pink and lace. And when you open it up, it's just like X's and O's, even though I didn't understand at that time what X's and O's meant. <laughs> and pop-up hearts. And I knew he liked them because he put them in his office. He hung them up with pride. And when I gave them to him, I'd be like, I love you, Rick. And I'd go in for a hug. 
and he would say, very good, Pen. See, even when I gave him a hug, he was just a little bit reserved. You know those people, and I'm obviously not one, and it's okay if you are, I don't got, it's okay. (laughs) But he was a little stiff, you know, when you hug him, you know. Um, Uncle Rick not only helped me with my homework in school, but he also kept me in school. Um, I had a habit in middle school of uh, being sick every Monday. Anybody else? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, okay, so you know. So I had a belly ache or a headache or an earache in my elbow, whatever. My mom would fall for it every time or just give in. My dad couldn't even look at me. But Uncle Rick, every Monday at 6 p.m., the phone would ring. How are you doing? Are you going to make it? <laughs> well, his psychology worked for the most part because a lot of Mondays when he'd call, I would try to be like, no. I went to school today. I'm fine, Rick. He also kept me in school another way. Uh, Middle school is challenging, I think, for pretty much everybody. Anybody have a good middle school? Hmm? Okay. (laughs) Okay. So uh, it was hard. And um, Uncle Rick said if I keep my attendance up, that we could run Bloomsday. All right. So everybody gets these t shirts at Bloomsday, and a lot of my classmates had ran Bloomsday and had these t-shirts, and I wanted one. And uh, Uncle Rick said, if you keep your attendance up, we'll run Bloomsday together. And I love this idea, because it meant that I um, got to Uncle Rick all to myself a couple times a week while we trained for Bloomsday. He came out to my parents' farmhouse, and we ran on the gravel roads, and we talked, and we jogged, and he was just my favorite guy. We ran Bloomsday, we got the t-shirt, and it was fun. It was so much fun that Uncle Rick said, hey, why don't we this summer run a bunch of fun runs? And so Saturdays at my aunt and uncle's turned into Saturday mornings, let's run the fun run, get our t-shirts, go and have poker afternoon, dinner, and then end with singing alcohol, not for me, and um, tomfoolery and silliness. And towards the end of the summer, Uncle Rick couldn't go to a race for some reason, but he had my dad take me anyway. My dad would always go and cheer us on anyway. He didn't run because he was a really, well, a chain smoker. (laughs) He's always at the the finish line. Come on, Benny! Okay. (laughs) Had to get that in there. Okay, so uh, Uncle Rick couldn't go. So I, my dad put me at the starting line and I ran, and I ran fast. I didn't have my running partner and I just wanted it over. And I got a ribbon. And my dad was like out of his head. He drove me to Uncle Rick's um, to show him my blue ribbon. And they both decided that uh, for my freshman year that I should enter cross country and track. And so my dad took me down the next week and I got on the cross country team. And I'm here to tell you that that changed my life. I don't think I'd be standing right here, right now, without that. I started uh, winning races. Um, I started, uh, um, Brick and my dad, Myrna and my mom had time to come and support me at these races. I uh, kept my attendance up at school and lo and behold, my grades went up. (laughs) Who knew when you show up? Uh, and um, I got a scholarship. And I can guarantee you that college was not in the, my future up until that point. I went to college, I ran there, did pretty good. A much smaller fish in a much bigger pond. And uh, eventually got my early education, um, uh, my teaching degree, I got a master's in education and a minor in music, which I found that love from earlier on in my life, from all the singing and silliness and tomfoolery. These things I use every day in my life. Uh, I'm a puppeteer, and uh, I do educational puppet shows for children, and I use that tomfoolery, silliness, and singing every day. All these memories are coming back, and I'm like, 
oh God, I gotta go see Uncle Rick. Uncle Rick has Parkinson's and rheumatoid arthritis and I hadn't seen him in a year and it's really progressing. And so I decided uh, we'd set up a trip and go to Spokane. Uh, we made arrangements, pulled up in the driveway, eerily empty, the kitchen nook, empty. We made our way through the door, threw the, I let ourselves in and went straight back to where I knew Uncle Rick would be in his chair in the living room. He looked so skinny and gaunt. The Parkinson's made it hard to eat, hard to swallow, hard to talk, tremors, hard to move. It was so hard to see my childhood hero sitting there when all my memories are of him running and playing racquetball and playing the banjo and being in a barbershop quartet and all of those things are just a blimp for him now. We sat down and talked to Uncle Rick and visited, made small talk, caught up on what was going on with the local family, mostly talked about his doctor care and, visit, and visits with the doctor. I could tell he was getting tired, so I wanted to make sure that I took the time to tell him about my dream. And after I told him, it took a second for him, but he said, those were good times, very good. He was tired and I decided that it was time to go and so I stood up and I was gonna, I was on the couch and he was in his chair right there and I was just gonna like lean over and give him a big old hug. But he would have nothing of it. He stood up from his chair, struggled. And as he stood in front of me, I gave him a big hug. And he hugged me back. And we held each other and I could feel his skin and his bones. And of course I said, I love you, Rick. And it took a second. And then he said, I love you too, Penn. Very good. <laughs>